I would never do is I would never predict a victory for any team that I was broadcasting. But the one thing I'm not going to do in this job is give advice on the market. Mr. President, Senator Dole is calling on you to meet personally with the budget negotiators to reassure them that you really want a deal. There seems to be some doubt about that. Are you going to call them in? Uh, I have been a participant and am a participant in all of this. And uh, I'm not going to go beyond that because nobody wants a deal more than I do with regard to uh, reducing the deficit. I started talking about eliminating the deficit 30 years ago on the mashed potato circuit. But the Democrats say you're not flexible enough. You're not giving your negotiators enough flexibility to make a deal. Maybe they're looking for an excuse for having created all these deficits. Do you think these negotiations are going down the tubes, Mr. President? No. Why not? Because they can't. Why, sir? Huh? Why, sir? They can't for the simple reason that it's about time after a half a century of deliberate deficit spending, this government straightened up and started operating within its means. What would be the signal to the market if you don't get a deal, sir? Well, I'm not going to speculate on that because we're going to, we're going to get a handle on the deficit. Lights, please. This way, please. Are you going to miss Cap Weinberger, sir? Are you going to miss Cap Weinberger? 
Yes, I always miss friends. This way, please. This is the full to uh, let me say personally how much I've enjoyed working with you for the last 52 well, months. Well, I appreciate very much all that you've done. Uh, do you remember the uh, gender gap problem? Mm -hmm. Oh, that's, uh, that was my inaugural event. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, listen, uh, you, you have a friend, a cartoonist. Yeah, I've got a friend. Well, uh, the name of all of them. Well, that's right. That's exactly yeah. right. Well, that's... Oh, you bandied that up for me. Yes. Oh, that's terrific. Oh, that's great. <laughs> I love it. And I have a little something else here also then that I... Oh, my oh. Lord. <laughs> well, this is terrific. That's great. Well, listen, now, I know the car, but who's this guy standing next to it? Oh, well, that's you. <laughs> that's great. That car should not be that color, but it's a pretty car. This suits you. You ought to have a car like this, Mr. President. <laughs> Give up that doggone Cadillac and get a Jag. Well, you, you make them in bulletproof? <laughs> well, you know, they can, they can arm the side. Well, listen, uh, I'm going to do some gift giving myself, if you don't mind. Oh. Do you mind? No. Well, let's try this. Uh, I'm a cartoonist, too, and that's what I'm going off that's to do. I'm going to, I'm going to try to syndicate a strip. And... Uh, uh, I did this for you in the appropriate high-class office of public affairs wrapping paper. Believe it. <laughs> <laughs> so why don't you go ahead and open it? Well, right. And I've also got one for your buddy Jim Coon. Oh, there and, he uh, is. And now I want him to step over here because he's been such a good friend of me and well, a friend no. of yours. Uh, just one other little souvenir. My golly, this is a, this is a, what is this, a free trade zone? <laughs> <laughs> open them together. Yeah, why don't we do this? That's the back. <laughs> and that's supposed to be you. <laughs> well, October 16th, 1987. That's the day I punched out of here. Uh, well, and I guess this is obviously me, Jim B. Nimble, Jim B. Quick. And there I am jumping over a <laughs> Very clever. Thank you. Well, I want to shake Jim's hand. He's my buddy. Sweet. Mr. President, also, I made Good Morning America, and I wanted to give you your son's schedule on... He's doing a series on the Soviet Union, as you know. Yes. And he starts the 16th, and that's what he's doing. Hey, so say, I'm glad to have this, can, um, many times we miss the announcement that he's going to be on. We well, I see. figured it out this morning, so I thought I'd let you know so you can tune in. Well, that's wonderful. Um, of course, I think how it's early be... in the morning do we have to get up? <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of problem. Too early. Sometimes you won't, you won't we, have found to that, we found that he's on before we actually have, have awakened. Uh, now, if it's after 7.30, we're, we're in. We'll be seeing it. It will be after 7.30. Good. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm going to open this now, too, if you don't mind. So that that takes quite a quick trick to go ahead. Should They're I not easy to open. They're not easy to open? Have the, uh, do you put these together, James? No, I think we have a machine that does that. There's oh, that's a good one. Yeah. Nice. I heard it went very well, too. Oh, you know, we were, yeah, we were getting a little frightened, though. When that fog came in, mm -hmm. and everything was upset, couldn't fly out, or George Schultz had to go by train. That's and right. From Helsinki, it was so bad. Mm -hmm. Then all of a sudden, we couldn't contact him anymore. Ron called and he was delayed him off. We couldn't get any word. And, that uh, would be scary. And we thought, nice box. you know, another yeah. damn offer or what? Oh, my word. And uh, 
finally I told Scare they were going to go through the embassy to see if the embassy could locate him or something. And we got a telephone call from California and he was home. <laughs> <laughs> but it was a big pattern. He'd taken train, I think, someplace and then something else to Frankfurt and finally out of Frankfurt and got here. And that's why he was incommunicado. The kids have a way of doing that. Hey, Mr. President, these are lovely. <laughs> and I know how much, uh, how special they are. Uh, they'll be very special to me. And let me tell you, I'm going to save and wear these. Uh, I'm gonna, Kim and I are getting married in February. And I'm going to wear these for the first time on our wedding day. Well, I think that's wonderful. Thank, Thank you for that's your time. And I tell you, you're doing the right thing, because that's what good is for kids and families. <laughs> <laughs> God bless you, and, uh, and keep up the good work. Well, now on your comic strip, is it going to feature me? Uh, <laughs> uh, well, I don't know. Uh, let me put it this way, Mr. President. You've been here long enough to know that there are walking caricatures in this building. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, and uh, it's uh, Lots of interesting a people. lot of interesting people. And, uh, you know, this is something I've wanted to do uh, ever since I could draw. What's, and, the, and what's the nature of the strip going to be? <sighs> well, <clears throat> you recall um, Pogo. Yeah. Pogo was set in a swamp. Uh, this may, uh, uh, we'll have animals and we'll have people, and uh, we may set this uh, in a circus community. Hmm. Uh, in other words, Washington. <laughs> inside the Beltway. I'll tell you who knows something about this. Edmund Morris has been uh, looking over my shoulder oh. while I've put this together. In fact, you ought to show that to him. He's, uh, he's been uh, a kibitz and a critic I'll along the way. Will you? Yeah. Well, he'll get a kick out of it. He'll get a kick out of it. <laughs> but I think we can probably work you in. <laughs> God bless you, sir. I know you, the, good, uh, the good Secretary of State is behind us. You but, know, uh, of course, that I am a comic strip reader. Well, of course. <laughs> it's the of first course. thing I turn to in the morning. All right. And in the Washington Post, I found that once you finish those three pages of that, you've gotten about the most <laughs> <laughs> that paper. Exactly. Well, they have a good straight. I, have a, I used to freelance from Meg Greenfield over there before well, coming she's here. An expert. And she's all right, yeah. and she'll use my stuff. Uh, I'm going to try to do both, try to do the political and the, and the comic. Um, in fact, the whole point of this strip is to do a conservative Doonesbury. response to Doonesbury. And this oh. guy's been getting away with murder for yes, years. Yes, he has. Yeah. And, uh, and there's no reason why a good topical strip from a conservative point of view shouldn't sell just as well. That's what I'm going to try to do. I'll keep you posted. <laughs> Thanks right. again. Well, thank you. Good luck to you. I'm, I'm absolutely thrilled with this photograph. And uh, this will uh, find a prominent place in my uh, studio. This is going to take a big frame. <laughs> God bless you, sir. Take thank you. 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 You look good, Mr. President Howard. Congratulations. Watch my lips. Ships. Passengers. Is a new plan? Oh, yeah. Okay. Remember every time we talk about textiles? Strom's talking about parachutes or something. Uh, good. Yeah, got the I look in it. Did you just get to work? Yeah. 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 Man, it's my own heart. What are you doing here at the road? You know, Bob's got a different one today. I've been feeling exceptionally good. We can take care of that. That's the point. I got the number six. No, I can't get you all excited. Yeah, the money's coming in. We got it. We got it. We got it. What time is it playing with the best of rules? Huh? What time is it playing with the best of rules? Four o'clock. I've already canceled one thing. I know. You guys stuck around for the signing. The signing? I may want to leave just a little more than that occurs. Just like they remarked on foreign aid yesterday. I, got, I caught that. What is that? That's about as close as I want to get to this. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> hey, I handle the room. Nobody knows the Republican anymore in the room. <laughs>
Dale says, uh, let's, put, let's give this to the junior member of the lot. Quillen said, I don't want that ball. Gladys said, I don't want that ball. We got it. Okay. Okay. Accept this statement. I believe Frank, that's enough said. You think he should have just said no? <laughs> <laughs> Mr. President, why aren't you more concerned about a Supreme Court nominee's use of marijuana? Because I'm old enough to have seen that era in which his generation and the generations earlier than that, uh, how it was taken and all, and. Um, how many of us would like to have everything we did when we were younger put on the book? Got a confession? Mm -hmm. <laughs> got a confession to make? No. <laughs> I got Only if you will all agree that you have confession. <laughs> we're, we're not running for anything. If we, we decided that you have to be 7 years old and, and aspire to government office. That's right. <laughs> 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 Are you really, you're satisfied with the nomination? Yes, and I'm satisfied with his statement. He was not an addict, and he was, there was nothing of that kind. A few experimentations, I'm sure there were a great many people who did that at that particular period. You're not concerned about the message it sends to the nation's young people? Well, I think the message it sends is that he says he's, he regrets he shouldn't have done it. Right. I think it's a helpful message. Do you think he could survive? Absolutely. Can he survive, Mr. President? If there's any justice in Washington, he can. Do you think there's no conflict with your calling him a law and order candidate, sir? No. Converts are sometimes the most devoted. Let's go, please. Thank you. We're going to get a deficit agreement here. Yeah, but you know, I can get attention. I was looking at you, big figures, but I Yeah, I saw those. I didn't see anything new in it, so that's a mark. Okay, oh, that's fine. Arriving member, did you miss that? Well, listen, I was going to break in the middle. Howard told you, told me about you wanting this meeting and, and uh, some, of the, some of the things to do, and I think it is really time that we really get, get down to getting something done, and I would like to hear uh, from you, you know, about, about where we are. And, Mr. President, thank you very much. I, I, I think we've, uh, you know, we've had a lot of meetings. Uh, I've been there for most of them. Some of these, uh, Mark, Bob, and Pete on my side, and Bob, people have been there probably for every minute. Jim, Howard, Bill, Bob. Mr. President, Mr. Minister, is yeah, that Mr. Minister, oh, I'm sorry, I kept you waiting here. I remember you were visiting Rome about 22 or 23. Yes. 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 Why don't we come in and... Uh, Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. Well, this is... Thank you, Mr. President. Yes. Mm -hmm. You watch it. It's a beautiful day. Yes. 